Stanford University. That's known as necrosis. We took classroom instruction, videotaped it, and then chopped it up into little bite-sized chunks, and then annotated each of those chunks with interactive content like quizzes that get the students involved and interested in what's going on. So they are orthogonal, but not orthonormal. There's different components that come into making this whole system work. There's the courseware project by John Mitchell, the Class X project by Bern Giraud, and then there's Open Classroom, which is a project of my colleague Andrew Ring. We put a single HD camera at the back of the classroom and it shoots a 180 degree view. That's all encoded at the end of the lecture in a way that allows the students to manually pan and zoom and look at the parts of the lecture that are of interest to them. The generic method for solving a set of linear equations. That system provides us with a very cost effective way of preparing material that really circumvents the bottleneck that people have had when preparing online content before, which is that it's really time-consuming and expensive. None of this existed when we started this project. At the end of the course, both last year and this year, we sent out a survey to all students and asked them how they liked the new format. About two-thirds of the class preferred the new format to a more traditional instruction style. From that, we would like to extract both the structure G as well as a set of parameters. The most popular components of this were, interestingly, the video quizzes. This is not a difficult problem. Online education has become a viable substitute for a large part of the educational mission that we have within institutions. And the miracle of it is that the same online component can then be used to reach a much broader population in a cost-effective way. For more, please visit us at stanford.edu.